What to expect when you take Valium, Diazepam if you're feeling nervous, anxious, worried, like you're jumping out of a plane without a parachute. Stay tuned until the end of this video. I'll explain how I overcame my anxiety and what natural parachutes you can use in times of need. Hello, friends. I'm Gianluca Italiano, and in this video, I want to explain the mechanisms you can use every day to combat that automatic fight or flight response. You might be familiar with this response, it's something we've carried with us for generations, for thousands of years, in relation to life's difficult moments, complicated and emergency situations where your body must react immediately. This is called the fight or flight response because your body must make automatic decisions to either fight or flee. Today, we no longer live in an environment like that of 10,000 to 100,000 years ago, where we faced real physical threats that we had to either fight or run from. What we suffer from daily are threats through our thoughts, negative thoughts, pessimistic thoughts that project us into an uncertain and often negative future, making us worry, scaring us, and creating a fight or flight response even though the surrounding environment is safe and calm. A part of our brain is called the autonomic nervous system. This part controls and manages all your autonomic activities, respiration, the opening and closing of blood vessels, your heart rate, and even digestion. These are all activities that are not under your direct control but are managed autonomously by your nervous system. The fight or flight reflex, which you might have experienced when someone shouts at you or honks their horn while you're driving, is directly connected to the autonomic nervous system and is managed exclusively by this system. It's not just a mental thing, it also has direct relations with your body. When you're anxious, stressed, or worried, and this reflex emerges, you'll actually feel your heart beating stronger, your lungs breathing more deeply, your muscles tensing up, you'll have difficulty digesting, and you might even grind your teeth as a response to a possible threat. Fortunately, our wonderful body also has a system to balance this automatic reaction related to the sympathetic system. We have a parasympathetic system that counteracts the sympathetic system and allows us to calm down, lower our heart rate, and breathe more deeply. This balancing between the two systems is called homeostasis, and the alternation of one and the other leads to correct psychophysical balance. If we are always worried and anxious, if we have constant activation of the sympathetic system, the fight or flight system, and never have sufficient activation of the parasympathetic system, that's when we can encounter more serious health problems, in addition to experiencing strong stress and anxiety. The parasympathetic system acts by activating all the functions of your body related to calm and tranquility. It will be easier for you to digest and go to the bathroom, fall asleep, and even have a sexual relationship with your partner. From an evolutionary point of view, this balancing makes a lot of sense. In an emergency situation, it's right to activate the muscles, pump more blood into the body, make the heart beat stronger, and have accelerated breathing to fight or flee. However, when the danger has passed, you can relax, digest, mate, and do everything you like in a relaxed way. If we can learn how to activate the parasympathetic system more, we can have enormous benefits in all other spheres of our day and our health. I myself, in the past, as a good Milanese, was always stressed, always rushing. If it wasn't for current problems, it was for problems in my mind, thinking about a hypothetical future that always made me hyper excited with a constantly active sympathetic system and therefore always stressed, and eventually leading to panic attacks and anxiety. Learning how to activate the parasympathetic system was an incredible turning point for me, helping me to control my anxiety much more effectively. The first thing to learn to manage this is how the parasympathetic system is composed. There is a nerve, the largest nerve of the autonomic nervous system, which starts roughly from the cervical area and goes down to innervate the diaphragm, the heart, and the digestive system. This nerve is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve has two functions. The first is to put your brain in communication with your internal organs. It is the nerve that transmits the impulse that tells the heart and lungs to beat stronger and breathe more frequently, but it is also the nerve that can tell them to calm down, increase digestion, or the production of sexual organs. This nerve is like a two-way highway, it's because of this that we can effectively act on the other side, trying to interpret well what thoughts and emotions are connected to anxious periods, and on the other hand, modifying physical aspects that send a positive message to the brain that everything is normal and that you can rest and relax. Now, I'll talk exactly about what I did, what helped me. These are all practical and effective exercises. The first ones are mainly physical, the last one, in my opinion, the most important of all, is really what all people should try to do, especially if they suffer from anxiety. The first exercise concerns vagal tone and respiration. Vagal tone is a specific measure that indicates how active your vagus nerve is. It's a simple exercise that you can do right away with me. 
Try to feel your pulse, the pulse of your heart. You can put two fingers, the index and middle fingers, around your pulse, place them right here in this area to feel the heartbeat. Maybe it's enough for you to simply rest, sit down to feel your heart beating. Take a deep breath, inhale while closing your eyes, and exhale. Try to do these breaths four or five times with me. Inhale deeply and exhale always through your nose. Inhale and exhale. Try to perceive what happens to your heartbeat. Inhale, exhale, one more time. Inhale and exhale very well. What you might have perceived through this exercise is that the more you have a deep breath, the more your heart rate decreases, slows down. You'll have a heartbeat that has a lower frequency instead of going tum 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 tum. You'll see that by breathing deeply, it will change, going tum 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 tum. This is what we call the vagal reflex, and the more it is accentuated, the more it is connected to a sense of well-being, self-control, and self-confidence. When a person manages to lower their heart rate through breathing, it means they are in control of their emotions and their autonomic nervous system and can easily switch from a fight or flight situation to a relaxation and digestion situation. If in your case, you didn't find a change, if your heart continued to beat strongly all the time even while breathing deeply, it means you have a very low baseline tone. You have little control over your autonomic nervous system. This, however, is not a disease, something you suffer from and cannot change. You can modify it precisely through breathing exercises. In the channel, there are many breathing exercises that I have already proposed in the past. In particular, you can click here at the top to see exactly what, for me, is the most effective one. There are five breathing exercises to do every morning. The benefit is precisely in what you will learn to increase your baseline tone. You will learn with breathing to control and stimulate your parasympathetic system to calm down and send a message to the brain that everything is fine, that things will change. It's impressive to note how this simple practice has a direct effect on your mind as well. I experienced it on myself in the first person. Try to do these breaths for 5 to 10 minutes. These exercises, which seem very banal when viewed from the outside, after 10 minutes, you will notice that your negative thoughts, your worries, have passed. You will start to have positive thoughts, you will be happier, more smiling. It really changes something inside your body and your soul that makes you feel better. Control your breathing and you will be a calmer person. The second practical method to lower anxiety and stress is through eye control. The eyes, as many say, are the window to the soul, they never lie. You can pretend to smile, but it's your eye that is the true litmus test if you are happy, if you are smiling, or if you are just pretending and smiling only with your mouth, but your eyes do not deceive us. In these situations, we have the idea of how much the eyes can have an effect on your autonomic nervous system, on your anxiety. Working to relax the eyes is an effective system to lower anxiety. The exercise that I often put into practice is precisely that of eye relaxation. It's enough to take your hands, rub them strongly against each other, as hard as you can, until they are nice and warm, until you feel some warmth. Now, simply place your warm hands over your eyes and keep them closed. Breathe deeply, try to relax your breathing as well, and allow the warmth of your hands to go and warm and relax the eye muscles. Let go now. You can also remove your hands, and you will already feel well-being, tranquility. The benefit, add to this a simple massage around the eyebrows or right on the eye. Place the harder part of your hand, this one, on the eye, don't push excessively, but draw circles in this way from the inside out, trying slowly to increase the pressure and increase the blood flow right in the area around the eyes. It has a very powerful and immediate calming effect. It really takes you 10 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds to feel calmer already and make the anxiety pass. The third exercise I want to talk to you about might make you smile, but it will surprise you with its effectiveness. I learned it directly from the animal kingdom, but it is also famous in psychology circles. It's called yawning. Try it when you're anxious, when you're in a situation where you feel all nervous, when you see that you're clenching your hands, your teeth tightly because maybe someone haunted you in the car, someone shouted at you, someone said something you didn't like. Try to stop and do a big, loud yawn like this, ah. Stretch out as if you were in your bed, as if you had just woken up. Try to do it as loudly and widely as possible. It's a kind of breathing exercise, but it's even more effective because it's directly connected to when we are calmer, when we are relaxed in a peaceful environment. It sends a direct message to your brain, telling it you are calm, that you are in a situation of tranquility. Try to see what animals do. Try to see your dog. If you see them too, Right in the moment of peace and tranquility, they start to yawn spontaneously, just like a message for them to stay calm, 
to stay relaxed, that the situation is under control, and everything will be fine. The fourth thing you can do, which will bring you enormous long-term benefits because it really lays the foundation for a calm and controlled soul, is something that today gives me the best effects. It has enormous benefits and has greatly changed my perspective on physical exercise and gymnastics. What I propose you do is slow and relaxing gymnastics, slow in movements and without ever being in a hurry. It's something that I initially repudiated a bit. I've always seen exercise, gymnastics, as something to train after a day of work. You want to go to the gym, lift weights, activate the physical part a bit, strengthen it, have better lungs, stronger muscles, have results and visible changes. It seemed like a waste of time to do slow movements, to do stretches for a long time. What was the point if you didn't have results, if you didn't see your body improving? I saw yoga, tai chi, qigong as strange oriental practices that there was no real reason to do. However, when I started doing these very slow gymnastics with always very paused movements, as if you were underwater, so the movement becomes softer, more relaxed, then I really understood the why of these approaches, of these methodologies. If you are always in a hurry, if from morning to evening you run in the car, at work, to pick up the kids, to cook, and you never have time to rest, in the evening, going to do spinning, going to do the exercise bike, or going for a run or a boxing lesson won't help you calm down. Try, however, to do 20 to 30 minutes of slow, moderate gymnastics where every movement really takes 5 to 10 seconds to happen. Move your body slowly, your mind will start to calm down, will start to speak more slowly, and everything will go better. You will find it incredibly easy to fall asleep, and this will surprise you. It will be very easy for you to take a nap and do things calmly because you spent half an hour, 30 to 45 minutes, doing slow movements. Your mind, maybe at first, was telling you you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to cook, you have to prepare things for tomorrow. Moving slowly, however, lowered the stress, lowered the anxiety, and even your thoughts will be much calmer. In the channel, there is already an exercise that I propose to you. If you want, click here at the top, and you'll see it. The basis is precisely that, slowness, deep breathing, calm while you do it, no hurry. That's the utility, you're not wasting time, you're really learning to stay calm. The more you have trouble staying still in a position without moving, the more you need to do these exercises because evidently, you are too attached to your anxious and hurried thoughts. Even just standing still for a minute seems like a waste of time. In reality, it's the best thing you can do. If you want to deepen these things, comment below because I intend, in the future, to make a real 45-minute class of gentle gymnastics against anxiety. And finally, the last thing that, in my opinion, will become a foundation of psychology and the cure for anxiety and stress problems, is the management and acceptance of one's thoughts. Today, we all have a big problem, identifying with our thoughts. We are what we think, this is what we believe. But our thoughts are a constant vortex that tosses us around. Sometimes a negative thought can stay in our consciousness for days and days, weeks and weeks, months and months, ruining our existence. I don't know if it has ever happened to you to be in the car and see the trees passing by. You see them, but they don't leave a mark inside you, you don't even notice them, they pass and that's it. But at a certain point, you see that car that was the same as your ex-girlfriend's. You broke up abruptly, and it left a bad memory inside you. That car, those two people hugging, passed by. Many years have passed, it can't be her, but that thought, that car, entered inside you, and in the minutes, hours, days after, even if you are now married, have your family, your job, you go back to thinking about that car, your girlfriend, those two people inside. This example is a bit like what can happen to you every time you get attached to a thought and don't let it go. The tree passes and goes away, it doesn't leave a mark inside you. That car, however, can pass, stay inside you and take away all your energies, continuing to make you brood over things without ever finding a solution. Maybe right now, it's happening to you with anxiety. How do I solve this problem of anxiety? No, I'm afraid the anxiety will come back. Oh my gosh, and what if I have that panic attack? At any moment, you have a thought that gnaws at you inside, and you can't get rid of it anymore. The old methods taught you to avoid that thought, to try not to let it come out. Today, however, we have learned that the more you try to avoid a thought, the more it grows, the stronger it becomes until it becomes truly invasive, and you end up anxious about having anxiety, you end up having a panic attack out of fear of having a panic attack. Because the more we try to avoid things, the more they grow. The real cure, 
or the most effective thing that seems to have been demonstrated in recent years, is that instead, you need to accept and let go. You are not your thoughts, your thoughts are something external that comes and goes, and if you want, you can take them and let them go. Do this simple exercise, imagine being a tree in autumn next to a river. Take the thought you have now, place it on the leaf, and let the leaf fall into the river and go away. Let the thought go, don't get attached to that negative thought. Stay as a spectator watching your body react when you have a negative thought, an anxious thought. Maybe it's precisely when you're on a plane, in the car, or when you go to work that you start to tense up. Watch what passes through your head, watch your thoughts. You are not the thoughts, you are the awareness that observes what thinks. You are here, you can watch your thoughts from the outside, they come and go. Don't get attached to your thoughts, don't let yourself be carried away, don't merge with your thoughts, but let them go. And if you learn this, your life will be completely different. You will start to know yourself more and more, you will start to understand why you behave in one way and not another. You will start to realize that certain thoughts maybe come from past experiences and how those experiences marked you from childhood, and you still carry them with you even now that you are an adult. Do you want to become free? Don't get attached to your thoughts, you are not your thoughts, you are another person, aware, centered, balanced. It means precisely that you are not attached to your thoughts, but you are free to accept life as it comes. What was your experience with the topic covered in this video? Tell us about it in the comments, we are curious to know. And if you have any doubts or questions, don't hold back. Leave a comment, even just a simple like would be perfect, but most importantly, subscribe to the channel to stay informed about upcoming releases.